morning, everyone. Again, we are in the middle of the crisis, Russia-Ukraine war. And Europe is playing a very, very important role in the whole scenario, in the whole crisis. We have with us today, retired Lieutenant General Pali Pawar. Sir is going to speak on Europe's reaction on a Russian, uh, the Russian invasion on Ukraine. So welcome to the ADU's chat room. Sir is sitting right now in Sweden, and we have with us editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, Sangeeta Saxena, to take the discussion forward. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. Chetali needs to be called ma'am. She's the one who's reporting the maximum being yes. stationed in Europe, sir. And uh, sir, it's, uh, Bali, sir, it's just wonderful to have you there. You know, you were, you are sitting at virtually the right time in history and witnessing it being made. And so Europe is something which uh, really makes sense to all of us at this moment, because eventually it's Europe which is going to be a part of this whole crisis. It's the one which is going to suffer. It's the one which is going to absolutely ensure that if something can be done for betterment of one of its own countries, it's only Europe which will have, which will have to stand up into it. The rest we've realized, sir, that everybody, uh, you know, had a uh, lot of uh, instigation, but eventually nobody is there and Ukraine is all alone today. So, sir, welcome to ADU's chat room, Balli, sir. And you are sitting in Stockholm, the place which really makes a difference. And this crisis, which better place to see it from? So, sir, let's begin. How does it feel to be in Europe at this time, sir? First of all, thank you, Chetali and uh, Sangeeta and ADU. It's always a pleasure to be speaking to you. Uh, having written the article on perspective from Stockholm, here in Europe, the feeling was during this build-up, I mean, I finished the article somewhere on the, um, I think, um, 16th, 15th, 16th or so, 14th or 15th. Thereafter, the, 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 the feeling here was, yes, something will happen. But, you know, Europe has, is shocked. Yes, when you say shell-shocked as to what actually he has done. They never expected this. They did expect something of a smaller scale. But what has happened now, this was, uh, I mean, that is why you find, I at times I find they're running Helton Skettler meeting here, meeting there, all that diplomacy which was done by the leaders, thinking that you know they'll be able to convince Putin. But Putin had his own plans. And you don't move two lakhs troops on three, in three directions. And then you say that uh, you expect the person not going to do anything. So anyway, that's a reality today. He has moved in with everything that uh, is there. And Ukraine is no comparison. It's a country which is now on its own. You brought it out rightly. It's just on its own. I, what I see in Europe is, you know, sanctions could have been done earlier. A lot of leaders in Europe, especially the East European leaders, you know, like these countries like Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, they are now coming out. Their defense minister has made a statement that these meetings should have taken place much earlier. They, it is time for action now. In fact, uh, EU had their meeting uh, summit yesterday. NATO leaders are meeting today. And uh, it's a European country, Ukraine. And everyone says it's part of Europe because today it is Ukraine. Tomorrow, what, what is the next target of uh, Putin? After all, all these um, um, Baltic countries in the East they're, they're all already, I mean, they're bordering Ukraine. So if tomorrow Ukraine goes, what is the next uh, target can be anything? Sanctions. A lot has been talked of sanctions. You know, uh, UK has put sanctions. EU has put the sanctions today when after they had a meeting. But the sanctions are long term, will possibly long term. And we all know what the sanctions are. Uh, like they have put for... Um, banks, financial systems, uh, some industries, also, you know, uh, the 
the sanctions for spare parts for Airbus, which the fleet operated, you know, the, the civil aviation fleet operated in Russia. Also on oil refineries, technology, not to give them. Similarly, some oligarchs uh, in the, uh, of Russia who have got assets in, uh, in Europe. Similarly, UK has done that. US has also done almost on similar lines. Uh, accepting that uh, what I heard today was that they are talking of freezing the European assets of Putin and his foreign minister. This is something that the EU is thinking of doing. But the biggest sanction, when you talk of SWIFT, there is a total divide in Europe. And three countries stand out, were spoken out uh, during this, when SWIFT was discussed, uh, that is Germany, uh, Italy, and where uh, Chetali is, Cyprus. These are the three countries which have vehemently uh, have opposed SWIFT. Even US has not uh, talked of SWIFT as yet. Similarly, UK also. So at the same time, there is a lot of talk in Europe that all these actions are too late. Some leaders in Europe are saying that these actions should have been taken earlier to put a caution on Putin. Whether he would have put a caution or not, no one knows. But it would, it would have at least made him think twice. On the other hand, where, uh, yeah. Uh, sir, I'll, I'll just, just a question in between, sir. That uh, what is the mood in Stockholm, sir? What is the mood in Sweden? Sweden has not, uh, you know, we haven't heard great statements from Sweden at the moment. But uh, Sweden is a part of the, you know, the complete northern part has been a part of it uh, very strongly uh, favoring Ukraine. So what is the mood of the general people there? What is the mood of the political establishment there, sir? Uh, let me be very frank, Chit, uh, Sangeeta. In Sweden, the effect is not that much what you see is happening in some of the other European capitals. Here, uh, it's life as usual. They're accepting the government has made some statements. The newspapers carried these statements. There have been some misinformation, you know, that uh, propaganda against which they have cautioned with the Russian propaganda. And they have said so. That is the Russians are spreading falsehoods. Please do not listen or uh, fall into this trap of falsehoods. That is one. Second, they have issued warnings on cyber attacks, which, is, uh, which their military is issued that we should watch out for our, some of our important industries for cyber attacks. See, the strength of the Swedish army is 55,000 armed forces, total. And whatever major strength they had, they have moved at Gotland Island, which I told you is like a aircraft carrier. But on their own, I mean, everyone knows Sweden cannot defend that. But, and it's not a NATO country. So I, at times I think because the NATO has made a very clear statement. Yesterday, I was listening to the NATO chief. Article 5 lays down only if a NATO country is attacked. So my you know, theoretical question is, what if Finland and Sweden are attacked by air? Or some, some sort of attack. What happens then? So will NATO react? Because after all, they are, they are a part of the European Union. So is Ukraine in Europe. And uh, all statements coming from NATO and from US is that we will not have troops in Ukraine because Article 5 of NATO lays down. And my own feeling is that NATO itself is, is a, a more of a paper tiger today. I mean, no one, even I've started considering now listening to news, listening to various channels here in Stockholm, that uh, is no great defense uh, block, NATO. I don't think so. Anyone seems to be afraid of it, least of all Putin. So uh, that's what in Stockholm, they have taken such very minor, but if you go out in Stockholm and roam around, which I had gone in the morning, I went for my walk and I was in some squares here and there. It's life as usual. They're not too concerned about what's happening in Ukraine. Sir, is, there a, is there a very sizable population of Ukrainians and Russians in uh, Sweden, sir? Uh, not very sizable. There are. Russians are there. But it's not, uh, you know, actually Sweden has got more population from 
countries like Syria, like uh, uh, Libya. I mean, th th that population you see, when you roam around, you, you see that. And Ukrainians, one has come across, but uh, they're not that many. The population, not that much. It's more of the others who are here, uh, especially from Africa, uh, than uh, the population from this side. Okay, sir. Sir, one thing which we also wanted to understand from you is that, uh, you know, what do you expect? Uh, see, today is only the second day of the conflict. And uh, what do you expect? Do you expect it to, uh, you know, grow? Do you expect it to uh, attract the other European nations into its fold? Uh, and uh, do you think that uh, after a certain amount of... Uh, you know, ingression, uh, Putin goes back, calls his forces back. Sangeeta, what, what is it? A week? Uh, today is the second day, and he's already about eight to, from the Belarus side, eight to nine kilometers from Kiev. His forces are there. Actually, uh, I was seeing the footage of these uh, helicopters which uh, dropped this yes. uh, uh, commandos on an airfield, strategic airfield, just uh, uh, towards, uh, towards the Belarus side. And uh, from what I gather and what is the uh, view in the Europe is that he wants the regime change. So he is likely, he'll take the capital, which is not a difficult task for him. It is slightly, I think as per their estimate, they should have taken it today, but maybe by tomorrow. He wants to change the regime in Ukraine and have a sort of a puppet regime, which is comes under their influence. But on the other hand, uh, having spoke, uh, I mean, seen and uh, heard a lot of other people, Ukraine is not the same Ukraine when he did Crimea. Uh, they are better prepared. They are certainly not, uh, you know, a, a, a walkover. So. The other part of Kiev, Kiev may be taken, but they may still stand up to him. But uh, the aim of Russians is very clear. Uh, I think Putin is very clear. And so that uh, the foreign minister, when he was speaking in the press conference today, Lavrov, he very clearly said that uh, this is an uh, oppressive regime and it needs to be changed. That is what our job is. And their statement he made is, we are not against the people of Ukraine. We have yes. come here to get them out of oppression. So that, that's uh, where I see uh, Putin's, uh, I mean, the Russian aim is, because they have also lost soldiers. I mean, some news which has come from other sources, not Ukrainian, that they have lost so soldiers. They have lost some, not the way they are saying six aircraft. They have lost helicopters. They have lost an aircraft. And tanks have rolled in. The photographs are available everywhere. So yes, he's not going back without this. Having done this, he's not going back. Right, sir. And sir, uh, when you talk of preparedness, and you are an av aviation expert, sir. So what is the uh, status of the Ukrainian uh, air assets? See, you can give any country any number of assets. Uh, I, they have, people have like UK claims, Americans claim that they have trained Ukrainian armed forces. So did the Americans train the Afghanistan armed forces, Afghani forces, and we know what happened there. See, these countries, uh, Ukraine and all, have been under the shadow or umbrella of someone or the other. Independently, they have not faced a threat where they have to fight, uh, you know, a country. And Russia is uh, uh, Ukraine is no match to Russia. So uh, while training and everything is good, it is basically the motivation of the, uh, the, the forces, the troops on the ground, and the leadership. If that motivation is there this time, which people are talking it is there, then uh, possibly uh, uh, they'll be able to uh, do something. But the NATO countries have provided a weapon system, not in terms of, you know, aircraft. Aircraft have been positioned. Americans are positioned. They have 16s where in Poland, 
in Germany, in some other country on the on the eastern flank. So what they are doing is they're strengthening the eastern flank. Those aircraft are not available to uh, uh, Ukraine. So basically, uh, giving a few guns, giving you know rocket launchers, giving anti-tank weapons, and no major. I don't find any major air uh, air equipment that has been given to Ukraine by any country. Right, sir. And sir, uh, you know, as we progress, uh, we have for the last two days seen a major exodus from uh, Ukraine, and uh, Poland has opened its borders. What about the other countries, sir? And has Sweden also opened its borders to the immigrants, sir? coming from Ukraine? See, Sweden's first, I'll take Sweden. Sweden has been taking immigrants from all over. And I see that if Ukrainians land up here, they will take them in because they have supported Ukraine. So there is no saying that uh, Sweden will not take in uh, the... In any case, uh, Sangeeta, these countries, Poland, Hungary, um, Bulgaria, Romania, they are not going to, you know, the, those, the, these, these uh, like what's happening, other refugees who are coming in, where the EU said it, they must be distributed in all countries. The similar thing going to happen. How is Poland, Poland going to sit with 30,000 refugees which have already come? And they're going to increase further. So this is to be, all this refugee problem will be a common problem of EU, not just for Poland or anybody else. So I think these refugees will be taken in Europe. Uh, they will work out, I'm sure EU will work out uh, how this is to be uh, sorted out, which they did earlier also when refugees were coming and countries like Austria and Hungary had refused to take those refugees. So I, I, I find that uh, refugees will be there, but it'll be, uh, this will also be a, a sort of a load on the European Union looking after them. Right, sir. And so uh, one reaction which uh, I would really want to understand from you is, since you are in Europe at the moment, uh, what is the reaction of the European countries towards this, uh, you know, sudden backstep by United States and UK? See, uh, this is a problem with NATO. Uh, I, I'll talk NATO because the Defense Alliance is NATO. Now, NATO is fully dependent on the U.S. But, the, uh, I mean, both are, both are, uh, the U.S. is also not NATO, but it is part of the NATO. That is why they were represented today in NATO's meet. The, I, I want to read something which uh, you must listen to on NATO. You know, when, this, uh, when the NATO expansion was taking place towards the eastern side, and uh, the ratification for this expansion uh, was done in the Senate, by the Senate in US. This is as early as early 2000. This was uh, the ratification. One of the senators, you know what he said? And that will answer you, uh, your question. He said, we have signed up to protect a whole lot of countries, even though we neither have the resources nor the intention to do so in any serious way. This is a statement made by a senator way back at that time. And that is the intention. Nothing has changed. There is no serious intention. NATO will not get involved in a di direct conflict. Even if they want to, the, these countries are not going to agree with each other. And the US, they're too much dependent on the US. Everything has to be done by the US. So uh, as, uh, as far as the East European countries are concerned, they are feeling let down, totally let down. This feeling is not that much in the Central and Western uh, Europe, but this feeling is very prominent from all the uh, uh, Twitter thing, uh, handles coming out or any other messages coming out. They are feeling let down by US and the entire uh, NATO. Uh, force. Right, sir. And sir, uh, now that we are coming to an end of our discussion, I just wanted to, you know, g you to give us a feel of, uh, you know, you are sitting 
uh, at the hub of the activity which is going on. A little distance from you is a major war scenario. So what do we expect from Russia as a reaction to all that condemnation he's getting from all the countries? But Russia is a big power. Now suddenly every country through its foreign affairs ministry is condemning him. Now what happens in such a situation when things get back to normal, uh, you know, they have their eyes on everybody who has reacted negatively to them. So how do you expect Europe to turn out to be after all this has died down and, uh, you know, Ukraine, if taken over, has been taken over and, uh, you know, the final result of this conflict, whatever. And uh, how do we expect that? How, how will we face that? You know, how will Europe face that? Because uh, then, you know, they have a huge, big enemy and uh, even if all of them get together, small, 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 small nations get together, but uh, then Russia still remains a very big power. Sangeeta, you said something very interesting, which I have been, you know, analyzing here. What happens now to Europe after this, after what Putin has done? And let me tell you, you said Putin, people have called him pariah, you know, uh, uh, another Hitler, all those names he's been called. But he's used to it. He did Georgia. He did what in Georgia? He did Crimea. And now he has gone into Ukraine. He, what about Syria? The, Syria? the Syrian government is there because of Putin. Had he not gone in, the, the, the Americans would have made sure that Syria also goes to Stone Age. Now, he, he must have done his homework very well, uh, Putin. And, you know, like sanctions. He, he knows the sanctions will hit him, but do you think he, he's, he's not that much of a fool that he don't know what the sanctions will do. But in Europe, one thing is clear now. And I think this, uh, their uh, EU uh, chair, who was speaking, that lady who was speaking yesterday, she made it clear that it will be a new era in Europe as far as relations with Russia are concerned. It cannot be business as normal anymore. Uh, that is the feeling, uh, at least at the, at the top in the EU hierarchy. But for that, one of the major steps they have to take is energy security. Today, someone said, Europe is scared that there may be power outages due to lack of gas and fuel in most number of these countries. Now that is what could, is the impact they are scared of. Europe is scared of, and for that, uh, rightly, I mean, all the statements that are coming from EU now are that it will be a new Europe. The security paradigm will shift, change, and we cannot have we cannot have business as usual with Russia. So that's where Europe is going to be in the future. And uh, before I finish, uh, uh, Sangeeta, I want to bring home one point. I was writing an article on um, military helicopters, dire straits in India. And you know, this car 226, which we were to get from Russia 200, it is connected, that's why I'm coming to that. Yes. That deal is almost off. It is, it is almost foreclosed because for six years we have been discussing and we have not arrived at a indigenous content and cost. But more important than that, all these helicopters are fitted with the turbomaker Saffron engines. They are not a Russian. Russian original engine is an underpart. They are fitted with that. And I saw some news items saying, no, no, this deal is off, but we should take 60 helicopters in flying flyaway conditions. And in my article, I've written to Putin yesterday. So I see a different relationship between Europe and uh, uh, Russia uh, hereafter, uh, whatever happens. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I mean, it was wonderful, you know, getting the point of view right from uh, a person who's sitting amidst all the activity. And sir, uh, you know, I, what I feel is what you're saying is very correct. 
that it'll be a new European Union, it'll be a new Russia also. And uh, a lot of new places in and around Russia, a lot of new friends and new foes, the new ge geopolitical condition might uh, you know, put forth. So it's going to be a very interesting world to see. Of course, our hearts are all out to the Ukrainians. We uh, really hope, you know, that the matter gets sorted out. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of Indians there who are stranded. Yeah, yes. So just keeping that in mind, you know, uh, we'd like to end up with the fact that uh, war has never got anything good to anybody. Yeah. So we just hope that uh, it, uh, we see a good end to it. And uh, hopefully, you know, friendship prevails. Yeah. Right, sir. Thank but you very much, sir. And I'll take you back to Chitali. And Thank you so much, Pali, sir. You're absolutely right. And your views, uh, they, are, they really mean a lot because amid all this tension, Europe is right now divided about it opinion, its opinions and its stand. And uh, your opinion and your views on Europe right now matters a lot to us. Thank you so much for your time and hope to have more discussions like this with you in future. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening.